Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing parametric equations involving conics. When you have x and y given in terms of a third variable, let's say t, then t is called a parameter. For example, if we have x equal to t minus 1 and y equal to 2t squared, they're both defined in terms of t, the parameter t. In this case, we're going to assume that t is greater than or equal to 0. Notice that x, y, and t are all variables. In this case, we're going to let x represent a horizontal position of an object, and we're going to let y represent the vertical position. t is going to represent the time that the object reached a specific point. By doing this, using the third variable, t, we can plot the path of the object by plugging in specific values for t. We can also show the direction of movement. Let's start by plugging in some values for t. So if t is equal to 0, then x is going to equal negative 1 and y is 0. So we would plot on the coordinate plane the ordered pair negative 1, 0. At 1 second, let's say, x is going to equal 0 and y is 2. And then we have at 2 seconds the ordered pair 1, 8. At 3 seconds the ordered pair 2, 18 and then at 4 seconds, the ordered pair 3 and 32. All right, so let's go ahead and plot these on a grid. So we have this as being the path of our object. So the x-coordinate is the horizontal movement, the y-coordinate is the vertical movement, and the t-value is the time at which it was at that particular position. Now, we could also graph um, the path of the object by eliminating the parameter t by simply composing the two functions x equals t minus 1 becomes t equals x plus 1. Using the y equation which is equal to 2t squared we can replace t with x plus 1 and we get the equation 2 times x plus 1 to the second. Now since t had a domain restriction of um, greater than or equal to 0 that means that x has a domain restriction of greater than or equal to negative 1. So we would only plot this parabola from negative 1 to infinity. So it's still going to be the same curve that we have. And now it's a little bit easier to graph it because you recognize the equation as being a quadratic and therefore the graph is a parabola or a u-shaped curve. But when we do eliminate the parameter t, we can't exactly find at what time it reached each point. So we'd still have to go back to the original two equations to be able to plot the time and the direction also. Notice that I've used arrowheads to show the direction of the object, what direction it's moving in. So the parameter t gives us a little bit of extra information. Okay, so we want to do this and combine it with trig functions. So in this case, we let x equals 3 cosine t and y equals 5 sine t. And t is going to be um, domain restriction between 0 and 2 pi inclusively. So if we let um, x equal 3 cosine t, then cosine of t is equal to x over 3. And we're doing the same thing by isolating the sine on the y equation. So y over 5 is the sine of t. The next thing that we need to do is find a relationship between cosine and sine. And we can do that with our trig identities. So we should know the Pythagorean identity where we have cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. Now all we have to do is replace cosine of t with x over 3 and sine of t with y over 5. And then we're going to simplify slightly. So we have x squared over 9 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. Now you should recognize this as an ellipse that has a major axis that's vertical and is centered at the origin. And you should be able to graph that pretty easily. But let's go ahead and find some ordered pairs first. If x equals 3 cosine t and t is 0, we're going to get out 3. And for y equals 5 sine t, we get out 0. So the ordered pair is 3, 0, which makes sense with the composite function that we have for our ellipse. At pi, you have negative 3 and 0. And at 2 pi, you have 3 and 0. At pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, you have points on your major axis at 0, 5 and 0, negative 5. So let's go ahead and plot it. 
So now you can see your lips. Now, if we had instead restricted our domain to be between 0 and pi instead of 0 and 2 pi, then we would only graph the top half of the lips where those t values are represented. And the bottom half of the lips is where the t values will be between pi and 2 pi. If you wanted to get, for instance, the right side of the hyperbola, you would graph between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So you would restrict your domain for that. Okay, let's do another one. In this case, we have x equals 2 cotan t minus 3 and y equals cosecant t minus 1. So the first thing that we're going to do is isolate the cotan in the x equation and the cosecant in the y equation. Then we need a relationship between the cotan and the cosecant. So another one of our Pythagorean identities is 1 plus cotan squared t equals cosecant squared t. And then we're going to plug in. And then we want to simplify this a little bit. So um, what I did was I um, brought the x plus 3 all squared over 4 to the other side. So now we should recognize this as a hyperbola with a vertical transverse axis and it's centered at the ordered pair negative 3, negative 1. But let's go ahead and plot some points so we can verify this. So we're going to plug t equals 0 into the x equation. So 2 times the cotan is 0 minus 3. Well, the cotan of 0 is undefined. Remember, the cotan is equal to the cosine um, over the sine. So wherever the sine is 0, you're going to have the cotan be undefined. Now, the cosecant is also undefined at 0 because, remember, the cosecant is a reciprocal of the sine. So at, uh, for both the x and y, you're going to have undefined values. So you don't really have a point on your graph at time equals 0 in this case. And then at pi over 4, the cotan is going to be um, 1, so you have 2 times 1 minus 3, or negative 1. And for the cosecant, um, you're going to have the square root of 2 um, for pi over 4. So you have 5 square root of 2 minus 1, and so on. So you can check out some of these values. Um, anytime that you need to, feel free to just pause the video and work through some of the problems. Okay, so what we ended up with was a hyperbola with a vertical transverse axis centered at the ordered pair negative 3, negative 1. So you can see your graph on here, what it would look like, um, and just plot those points. But again, it's much easier to graph it after it's been composed in terms of x and y only than to graph it in terms of t, x, and y. But always go back to your ordered pairs so you can get your t values and mark those and the direction of your graph. Okay, here's our next one. We have x equals 2 secant t and y equals 7 tan t. And this time we're going to restrict our graph to be between 0 and pi. So again, isolating the secant for the x equation, isolating the tan for the y equation. And then we have to have a relationship between secant and tan, and this time we're using our Pythagorean identity where we have 1 plus tan squared t equals secant squared t. And then plugging in our values and simplifying. Okay, and we isolated 1. So we have x squared over 4 minus y squared over 49. And this is going to be another hyperbola with a horizontal transverse axis centered at the origin. And again, we're just going to plug in some specific values for t on its domain between 0 and pi inclusively. So again, we're going to have some undefined values. So remember that when you're plugging in pi over 2 for the secant, the secant is going to be 1 over the cosine. And the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So that's going to be undefined for the secant. It's also going to be undefined for the tan because the tan is equal to the sine of the cosine. So again, your denominator is going to be 0. So the tan is going to be undefined at pi over 2. OK, so what we want to do is go ahead and plot those points. Now, because we restricted our domain to be between 0 and pi, we only have part of the hyperbola. And the two parts of the hyperbola that we ended up with are the part branches in quadrant 1 and part of the branch um, that's in quadrant 3. So you have just those two branches. Of course, if you had gone all the way to 2 pi, it would complete out the hyperbola for you. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.